calculus and vectors 1.2 the slope of a tangent to a curve so in this lesson we're going to find the exact rate of change at a certain point on a curve this is a little bit different from what we were doing in advanced functions this first part very same we talk about a secant line which is a slope between two points or the average rate of change remember that the arc and the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of a tangent at a certain point. So this tangent, if we knew this point here, we could say, what is the slope at that point for x equals 2 or whatever? It's the instantaneous rate of change at a specific point. We'll just call it x. So what we're going to be doing in this lesson, however, is a little bit different from what we were doing in advanced functions in that instead of having um, plugging in a value into our equation. So for instance, if I had asked you, what is the slope at three? And I gave you an equation, you would have evaluated 3.01, f at 3.01 minus f at three and divide by 0.01, right? And that was giving you an approximate rate of change. So what we do in calculus oops, is actually we take a point p, x, and f at x on a curve, and another point down the curve here, q, and q would be x plus h, that's my x coordinate, and f at x plus h would be the y coordinate. And we have this distance h. This is like you putting in 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 or 0 0.0001. So in calculus, what we're going to do is we're going to make this h so small that we're going to know exactly what the slope of the tangent line is going to be here. So we're moving this h this way, right? We're going this way, making h smaller and smaller and smaller until we can actually say that h is equal to zero. So as h approaches zero, the secant line becomes a tangent line whose slope is a rate of change at that point. So we have a basic equation that you need to know very well, and that's this one here. And this is the differential equation. To find the derivative, we say. You find the derivative. A derivative is an equation that is actually a slope function. It tells you the slope at any point to your curve. So slope, you've discussed it as m before, y equals mx plus b, and we're going to be using that equation as well to find the equation of the tangent line. In this part of the lesson, we're only finding the slope. So f prime, we say f prime x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f at x plus h, that's this, minus f at x divided by x plus h minus x. So we have h here. You must include this limit definition until the point where you can plug in h is 0. Now you might recognize there's going to be a problem right away in that we have an h in the denominator. So if h was zero, this whole thing would fall apart. So we're going to do some manipulations, algebraic calculation parts to these equations so that we can eliminate this h. Not eliminate, we're going to divide it out into an h in the numerator. And it's quite magical. And the point is that if you can't divide this out, you have made a mistake. Okay, so let's try a polynomial function, x cubed. What is the limit? Um, we want to find the slope, sorry, when x is 2 for f at x equals x cubed. So the very first thing you should do is write out this limit definition. f prime x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f at x plus h minus, I hate these pencils, minus f at x over h. Okay, and now we're going to find f prime at 2. So I want to know what is the slope when x is 2. I continue to write out the limit as h approaches 0. Now f at 2 plus h, because I'm plugging in 2, I want to know at 2, minus f at 2 over h. Okay, so now I have to plug in 2 plus h into my function x cubed. So this will be the limit as h approaches 0. Remember, 
I'm keeping this nice and straight, equal signs, limits underneath, and I have 2 plus h cubed minus 2 cubed over h. So all I did was plugged it in my x and x plus h in for here, so I still have the cubes. Okay, so what is that? The limit as h approaches 0. Now, this part, 2 cubed is 8, and I have a difference of cubes here. I know you probably wouldn't have thought that. You would have thought, oh, I've got to expand all this out. But no, you don't have to do all that, because remember that a cubed minus b cubed, do you remember doing that in advanced functions? We keep the a minus b, and then we have a squared. We change the sign, plus ab, plus b squared. So I'm going to use that to factor this to get rid of this h. So this is what you would do if it was a cube function. If it was a difference of squares, you might use that, or a difference of, you know, fourth power minus something that you can take the square root of. So watch what we're going to do here. So this is my, my a here is x 2 plus h, right? I'll write that over here. a equals 2 plus h and b is equal to 8. Well, it's 8, but if I just want b, cube root of b of 8 is 2. So I have 2 plus b and 2. So that means this is going to be a plus h, not b. So the limit is going to be, now I'm going to factor it, right? So I'm going to put 2 plus h, that was my a, minus the b, so minus 2. And you might see right away that I'm going to be left with an h that I can divide out. Isn't that fancy? And now I have a squared, so 2 plus h squared plus 2 times 2 plus h, that's my ab, and then my b squared is going to be 2 squared. My b is 2. Okay, and this is still all over h. Don't lose the h along the way. Okay, so I think you can see what's happening here. So I have the limit as h approaches 0. So 2 minus 2, those are gone and h divides into the h. So I've gotten rid of this from the denominator. And because I've done that, I just have this now, right? So um, you can expand all this out if you want. Um, I will, but you'll see how you don't really need to, because what you want to do is now plug in h is 0. But you keep the limit here. We'll, we'll expand it. So I have squared twice the product, so plus 2h plus h squared plus 4, plus 2h, so I'm just expanding these, plus 4, and I'm going to move it up here. Okay, so now I have the limit as h approaches 0, don't forget your equal sign, and I have 4, and I have an h squared, h squared, I have 2, 4, did I miss, make a mistake here? Squared, twice the product squared, plus 4, plus 4h. This should have been 4h. Okay. So I have 8 squared plus 6h plus 12. And now that I'm all set to plug in h is 0 here, so the limit is h approaches 0, I can say, well, that's 0, that's 0, and I get 12. So this is the slope that's the slope to this function, x cubed. So if I do you a really quick sketch of y equals x cubed, now it goes like this. So when x is 3, so we have 1 and 1, 2 and 8, 3 and 27, we have a very steep slope up here, right? And it actually is 12. Is that magic? Or magical, whatever way? Okay, let's try a radical function. So determine the slope of the tangent to um, f at x equals x minus 5 when x is equal to 9. Okay, we start the very same way. We're going to write out f prime x 
is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f at x plus h minus f at x divided by h. Okay, write it out. You'll get good at it. Okay, so I want to know what f prime is at 9. So I write out the limit as h approaches 0. I'm going to write it out. I might just keep doing it the long way here, just so you don't miss a step. And then um, you might want to skip this step as you go along. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in the limit as h approaches 0. So I want f at 9 plus h. So that's the square root of 9 plus h minus 5. And f at 9, if I put in 9 here, uh, I'll even write that in here for you so you don't you can see absolutely everything that's happening. Okay, there we go. So let's simplify that just a little bit here. The limit as h approaches 0. 9 minus 5 is 4, so the square root of 4 plus h minus the square root of 4, and that's just 2, over h. And now you're going to say, how am I going to divide up this h? I can't plug in h is 0 here, can I? And guess what you're going to do? Can you think of something with to do with this that we did in the very last lesson? And the answer is yes, you do. It's called rationalizing the numerator. Oh, you thought you wouldn't use that one, right? So let's rationalize the numerator. So we're going to multiply because I'm trying to get an h up here. That's why I'm doing this because I want to divide this out because I can't plug in a zero here. I could put in a zero here. And I'd have 2 minus 2 is 0 over an undefined number. So no, you can't. So what's the conjugate? I have 4 plus h. It was minus 2. I make it plus 2. And I do the same thing in the denominator. Don't worry about having an extra h in the denominator because we're just going to plug in a 0 for that. Watch, it's really cool. So I have the limit as h approaches 0. Now I expand this. Now remember... You only have to multiply the first two and the last two. So 4 plus h, root of 4 plus h, times that one is just 4 plus h. And minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. <clears throat> and in the denominator, I have h. Don't forget, you still have all of this, right? Square root of 4 plus h plus 2. So my 4 minus 4, 4 minus 4, yeah. And h goes into h one time. And I get the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over the square root of 4 plus h plus 2. And now I plug in, now plug in h equals 0. Because I can do that, right? 4 plus 0 is 0. The square root of 4 is 2. And 2 plus 2 is 4. And I get 1 over 4. And that would be the slope. And does that make sense? You might want to. Don't you just love my bandage? I chopped my finger off. Almost. Okay, so the square root of x minus 5, that's the radical function shifted to the right, 5 units. So we have something like this. And when x is 9, so about here, you have a very... Oh, slow, small slope, and that is one quarter. Okay, so that's with a radical. Now let's take a look at one more, which is going to be a equation of a tangent to f at x equals 8 plus 3 over 3 plus x when x equals 1. Okay, so this is the third type, and each one is just a little bit different in, in the way you solve it because it's just the algebra part, right? So I'm going to write out the definition again. F, pro F prime x equals F at x plus h minus F at x <clears throat> over h. Okay, so I want F prime at 1. F prime at 1 is equal to, and it's good if you follow these alone because you need to know, you need to know the little tricks 
to make this easier. Okay, so I've written it all out. Now this one we've asked for the equation of the tangent, so that's important as well that you know how to find a, ta a tangent equation. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in 8 over 3 plus, and I'm plugging in 1 plus h for, um, that's a really bad 8, isn't it? Uh, 1 plus h for x, and then I'm subtracting f at 1, so that's 8 over 3 plus 1. Now this is where I would suggest you do the following. Because you have something over something, and this is still all over h, you can put, put the h out over here as times 1 over h. Okay, so put this here. It makes your life so much easier so you don't have something over something over something. It gets way too confusing. Okay, so can we do this? Oh, what did I really miss here? Oh my goodness, Miss Hyra, you just failed your calculus course. Okay, the limit as h approaches zero. It's too early in the morning here. I wanted to get some more lessons done before my day begins equals the limit as h approaches zero. Ooh, equals the limit. Maybe you did the same thing. Okay, make sure you have that in there or it's all wrong. You're not doing it properly. Okay, so I have the limit as h approaches zero. Now, I can't, um, I can simplify this. Let's do that first. So I have eight over three plus one is four plus h minus 8 over 3 plus 1, well, that's just 2, isn't it, times 1 over h. So in order for me to subtract these, I need to have a common denominator. And that's another little trick you're going to have to do with these rational expressions. Okay, so I have 8, and I have 4 plus h in the denominator, and I'm going to multiply 2 times 4 plus h. So they have the same denominators. Nothing tricky here. Times 1 over h. Oh, and look how perfect that works. Now remember, I told you, if this, if you can't cancel out the h with something in the numerator, then you need to go back and figure out what you did wrong. It might be something as simple as doing um, a negative sign incorrectly. Or maybe you forgot to write limit as h approaches 0. Okay, so I have 8 minus 8 minus 2h. Don't forget that. So I have minus 2h over 4 plus h minus h over 4 plus h times 1 over h. Now I can divide the h's out here. See? Like that. So I have the limit as h approaches 0. doesn't hurt to show all the steps, right? So I have minus 2 over 4 plus h. And what is h equal to? As h approaches 0, h becomes 0. I get rid of the limit, right? I'm not going to write it out again. So I have minus 2 over 4, which is equal to minus 1 half. Okay, so I found the slope at 1 to the curve of 8 over 3 plus 8x. Now, but I want to know, what is the tangent? Okay, so we need to do the tangent calculation now. Tangent is a line, right? It's not a slope. But I have the slope. So I can say, well, the slope is equal to minus 1 half. And I need a point on the curve. So I can use the point 1 when x is 1 y was 2. So I have the point 1, 2 and the slope of minus a half. So I write out y equals mx plus b. I'm going to plug in my y is 2. Remember you're trying to find b here, right? Like grade 9. Um, 2 equals minus a half times 1 plus b. So this is going to be minus a half. I bring it over here. I add it, that's going to give me 5 halves is b. So the tangent line, and you're going to find a lot of tangent lines in this course, so get used to get used to this. Minus 1 half x plus 
five halves. Now, if your teacher asks for the line in, in standard form, do you know what to do? You would clear the denominators, right? So you might have to say 2y equals negative x plus 5 or x plus 2y minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so I don't know that if your teacher it would insist on that. I was happy if my students found this nicely for me. <coughs> okay, so that's, um, that's the hard part, right? Now, you might want to spend a bit of time doing some calculations um, in your homework assignment. There are some, some exercises where you have to find the, um, they ask you to simplify. So I'll, I'll show you the kind of questions they ask. So they give one of these, and we did this at the very beginning. So they have like five plus h cubed minus 125 over h. And this is to get you to practice. Um, this is 4a on page 19. Ooh, page 19, we're at the beginning. So again, this would be a difference of squares question, right? Factor it as a difference of squares. And they're trying to get you to work on simplifying to get rid of the h. And um, Maybe I'll just do this as an extra little lesson. There's, you know, one like that. There's a rational one. There's a radical one. And they're really good practice for you. But I think with the, the work that I've done for you in this lesson, you'll be able to follow the patterning of how to factor a cubic function when you're doing this kind of work. So we did a cubic. we got so many papers here. We did a cubic. We did um, not that one. <laughs> We did a rational function, and we did the, oh, that was another lesson altogether. But you get the idea. I want you to practice those, so make sure that you can do the three different types. So you have a polynomial, you have a radical, and you have a rational. Make sure that you can find um, the, the slope from first principles using this equation to find the exact slope. Okay? If you have any questions or you'd like me to do some of the ones from your homework, just leave me a little note and I'll try to make you a quick little video.